Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. I want to start off by saying thank you to all of our Booster Club members for your many donations and much more your prayers. We visited faraway countries and strange lands. We've even spoken to dignitaries and were detained for spreading the glorious gospel in Cuba. The truth is that the descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel were scattered throughout the world. Help us on our journey as we continue to raise up the nation of Israel. 12 tribes worldwide. Join or donate today. Shalom. Hey, go to uh, Sirach 42 and start at verse 7. Because um, cause what he talked about was ending generational curses, right? Things that, that, that we see wrong in our communities, right, that we want to fix. But then ourselves, we go and walk into the same way that got us in these curses altogether. Read this, Sirach 42 and 7. Ecclesiasticus, Sirach 42, verse 7. Deliver all things in number and weight and put all in writing that thou givest out or receivest in. So the Bible tells us put everything in writing, right? Put everything in writing. So that goes into that marriage, right? Where the brother went? The brother just walked off? Okay, okay. It says put everything in writing. So that's something that we should look into. Just like how he said, if something, God forbid, something was to happen to him, it's nothing you could do. If he was laid up in a hospital bed and they're trying to make a decision on whether to save his life or let him go, you couldn't say a word. Nothing you can say. You can just sit back. You know what? I know that feeling because my son just got sick. And guess what? I couldn't go in the hospital. My wife couldn't go in the hospital with him. So we just sitting back not knowing what's going on. It drove us crazy. So think about that to be able to go to the hospital and they say, well, who are you? Oh, well, I'm, I'm his, uh, his partner. And they go, well, look, you can't come in here. Right. And we know in our families, right. We have a lot of issues with our mother-in-laws, father-in-laws, and stuff like that. Mother come in there, his mom come in there and say, oh, she ain't nothing. We doing this and we doing that, we doing this. It ain't nothing you can say and nothing you can do about that. Where's the honor in that? Where you can come and step up and say, I'm his wife, and we're doing this, and we're not doing that. We're going to bury him here. We're not going to take him there. You see what I'm saying? It's honor in marriage. It's honorable. It's no honor in being a jump off. A lot of brothers don't want to get married. I'm going to tell you why. Because we always think in the back of our mind we can go do something else. Right. If I get married, I got to go through this whole uh, court process and money and this and that to get out of this. When I'm not married, I can just say, look, I don't want to be with you no more. I'm out. Right. It's a commitment there. You know. And we have to start living by commitments. Our people for too long, we don't live by commitments. Right? Keep reading. Verse 9. Verse 9. The father waketh for the daughter. So the scripture's talking about a father and how he feel about his daughter, right? I wanted to make sure, what a brother, he walked off? He walked off. All right, all right. But we're talking about a father waking for his daughter. I mean, he watching out for his daughter, right? You have a daughter. So the, the brother that you're with, that's the father, right? He's supposed to be looking out for his daughter. You think he want his daughter to be in a relationship with a brother that don't want to marry him, don't want to marry her? And just like, this my, you know, this my situation right here. Nah, he want honor. Right. He want the brother to come to him and be like, hey, I want to marry your daughter. I want to do right by her. Right. Nobody, nobody want their daughter to be a, you know, I'm going to say jump off, but nobody want their daughter to be that. You want righteousness. You want something honorable to happen to your daughter. Right. Why won't he treat you the same way? You see what I'm saying? Read. When no man knoweth, Go ahead. and the care for her taketh away, Sleep. It says the care that a, that a father is supposed to have for his daughter, it takes away sleep. Right. You're worried about your daughter, especially in this day and age. You got the WAP video. Our sisters want to be Cardi B. They want to be Meg Thee Stallion. They want to do all those different things, right? So a, a real man, he's like, I don't want my daughter to be like this. I don't want my daughter to get with a, a Tory Lane so where he'll shoot her in the foot like a movie or something like that. I want my I want my daughter to be with a real man. First Kings 2 and 2. I want, I, want my, my, I want my daughter to be with a real man. If I had a daughter, look, within how we deal with things, that don't work like that. You see what I'm saying? The, it has to be proven. You have to be proven to that father that you are worthy to be uh, my son-in-law. 
Right. You see what I'm saying? That's how it should always be amongst us. You shouldn't just get a phone call and, and hear, hear your daughter say, oh yeah, um, I'm, I'm, I'm pregnant by this dude here. Like, I never even met him before. It it's honor in all that. It's honor in order. It's honor in marriage. It's honor in signing your name on the line and saying, we are one now. Right. Read that. First Kings 2 verse 2. Oh, I go the way of all the earth. Well, this King David, he's talking to his son. He says, look, I'm about to go the way of all the earth. I'm about to pass on. Read. Be thou strong, therefore, go ahead. and show thyself a man. Show thyself a man. The Bible's about to give a definition of what a real man is. You know, because we weren't taught that. The older generation, they failed us. They didn't teach us what a man was. They didn't teach us how to command our households. When you talk about marriage now, they say, uh, uh, don't do it, bro. Don't do it. You know what I'm saying? That's what we heard. We in the barbershop, they talk about marriage. We had to hear men talk about how horrible marriage was and how you want to sit in your car before you get home, take the long way home, get a drink before you come to the house. That's what I heard when I was young. You see what I'm saying? But if somebody asked me about marriage, I was like, marriage is the best thing that ever happened to me. It is what it is. I love my wife. You see what I'm saying? Because my wife is in her role and I'm in my role. And I'm the only one that wear pants in my household. You see, it's an order. When things go in order, it makes sense. Marriage does not make sense without the laws of God. It's actually dumb to me. Why would anybody get married if you're not going to keep the laws of God? That's right. Why get married to your woman telling you what to do in the household? Why would you get married and a husband hitting you upside the head? Why would you have to worry about him sleeping with another sister or you sleeping with another brother if y'all not going to commit to keeping God's laws, statutes, and commandments? Then, yeah, it don't make sense to sign no paperwork. You see what I'm saying? So it's going to have to be a change or renewing into your mind. You have to start back to keeping the commandments and like the scriptures about to show you what a real man is, read. And keep the charge of the Lord thy God. Just like he said, the perfect example, let me just go by. It's uh and that's 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 what what you see right here is a generation curse keep going down. God Sabbath day, the older man. Our communities are horrible right now. Why aren't they out trying to fix those communities? Now, they want to have fun. They want to have a good time. Like you said, who the true Christians are. We give that stuff up to make a real sacrifice. Right. You see what I'm saying? I know brothers right, I know a brother right now. I'm, I came from Memphis. I'm here from Memphis. And guess what? He could be making $50, $60 an hour. But all those jobs want him to work on Saturday. He rejected. He rejected. That's a real sacrifice to serve God's law, statutes, and commandments. Right? Read where we at. Read. And, and like you said, a perfect example of, of an honorable marriage and a dishonorable marriage, Will Smith and Jada. What they say, they had an entanglement. Right? They have a, a different arrangement. Their marriage is outside. Like, now look at and Will. This man is super duper rich. He on TV crying. You know what I'm saying? Because guess what? That's not right. We know it ain't right. It's got to be honor in marriage, right? They say make America great again. Make marriage great again. You see what I'm saying? Read that. To walk in his way. So to be a man, according to the Bible, you have to walk in the ways of God, right? We know, I never met men before I came into this truth. I never met somebody who walked in the ways of God. Read. To keep his statutes and his commandments and his judgments and his testimonies as it is written in the laws of Moses. So guess what? To be a real man, he's got to keep God's laws, statutes, and commandments. That's something that we haven't been taught. But we, the things we hear, right? That uh, mindset of that's a that's a contract or agreement of the white man or whatnot. You know what I'm saying? Now we follow we follow thousands of laws all day long. Why do we pick something like that to not want to follow? Like now nah, I don't want to go in that agreement. And you got a driver's license? Yeah. Okay. A lot of times, brothers care more about their pit bull bloodline than they care about marriage. You see what I'm saying? Brothers will be like, have all kinds of paperwork on their pit bull. Like, oh, yeah, this is a red nose of the, this line and that line. He came from Bobo out of Alabama. Brothers will go hard about his pit bull bloodline and paperwork and certificates. But then when it come to his woman, he's like, look, we don't need to do all that. That's all good. That's just some white man doctrine. Bro. We got to come out of that thing. Bro. You see what I'm saying? You had, you had a question. What do you 
already got two of them. You take care of those shoes and let me know uh -huh. but they don't respect them. Who don't respect them? All right, so, all right, um, give me Hebrews chapter 10. I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you something. He said, when you walk into a home, you want to be a man of God, right? And you, you're dealing with a sister, and she don't want to respect. But she got children, and, like, these ain't my children. I'm taking care of them like mine, which I don't mind. You feel me? But gotcha. The respect ain't them. You feel me? Okay, all right. For, well, first, you got to start keeping God's law, statutes, and commands, right? And Okay, all right. And then when we read, matter of fact, before we go to that, go back to uh, Genesis 18 real quick. Genesis 18. Big. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Genesis 18. Because if we did everything according to the scriptures, you would never really get in that situation. Not, not to say that we shouldn't deal with sisters that got kids, but to say it should be a process before we say, this is my woman. Right? But now you're already in there. Right, so read that again. Genesis 18, verse 18. Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. For I know him, that he will command his children. He will do what? That he will command his children. And what? And his household after him so it's a job for you that's why that's why a lot of people don't want to get married you know why because it's work you're not just going to say i'm gonna get married and everything gonna be all good you know i'm gonna come in it's gonna be birds chirping in the morning time it's gonna be breakfast in bed in the morning she's gonna call me on my lunch break and say baby how you doing i love you no the bible says it's gonna be trouble in the flesh that's in marriage it's work it's work you have to work you have to put in work for a marriage to work right so you, you have to command your household, right? You have to see the things that's not right, and you have to put it in place, right? And the only way that's going to work is if your wife is in order also. Right. Because if she's in order in subjection to you, then when the kids try and bump back at you, she's going to step in also and say, hey, you're not right. The problem is, is our women don't want to follow that order. Up, right? They treat their kids like they're their boyfriends right. and girlfriends. Right. That's a big thing that goes on in our community. That's why God's law, statutes, and commandments are the only thing that's going to fix this thing. Go to Ephesians chapter 5, real quick. Ephesians 5. Ephesians 5, 22. 22. Yeah. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands, as unto the Lord. As unto who? As unto the Lord. You know... My wife called me Lord. You see what I'm saying? She don't say, ah, oh, baby, boo. She called me Lord. We out in public. Lord, my Lord, my Lord. She be at work. Uh, I'm on the phone with my Lord. People are like, what? What the hell? What do you mean your Lord? The Bible says that a righteous woman should submit herself to her own husband. How? As unto the Lord. She should see you and see Jesus the Christ. You see what I'm saying? She should see that. Cause if because look if Jesus Christ came out the sky walked in the house and said hey I want a I want a I want a sandwich right now guess what she gonna do she walking in that kitchen she probably running in the kitchen and she bringing out you want mayonnaise you want Miracle Whip what you want on the sandwich you want me to cut some um some lettuce uh some tomatoes let me know it should be the same way for you you see what I'm saying and that's why hold that go to Sirach chapter six verse seven Sirach six verse seven how you doing sister how you doing brother. Did you have a question too? I got a list of oh, Okay, all praises. So Rock 6 and verse 7. Read that. So Rock 6 verse 7. If thou wouldest get a friend. If you want to get a woman, get a wife, read. Prove him first. You got to prove him first. See, that's why we, we so far out of the proper steps right now, we catch our people in the middle. You see what I'm saying? So now you're in the middle. You're in an entanglement right now, right? You got to figure out how to get yourself out of this thing. So the first step is you. You have to start keeping God's laws, statutes, and commandments. When I found this truth, guess what? I was just a regular old, what I, I call a, a Saturday dad, right? I was just a regular old guy, right? My, my wife, she believed in the Bible and all that stuff. I went to church just to make her happy, you know? But I did what I did. It is what it is, right? But when I came into this, I had to change, Acts 319. I had to make a change. I couldn't just be like, well, I want to do it, but she don't want to do it. Uh, well, maybe every other Saturday I'll come and 
keep the commandments of God or, you know, she can cook pork in the house when she want to and I just won't eat it. It don't work like that. You had to, co I had to command my house. She had to understand it's one way. That's it. It wasn't going to be no other way. And then look, I ain't beat it into her. You know, I gave her, it was a process. For me, it really wasn't a process. I saw it and was like, that's what I want to do. But I knew it don't work like that from everybody. You want to know why I knew that? Because I congregated among like-minded brothers and sisters. And they was able to guide me and say, look, don't just smash on down on your wife right now. Give her a time. Show her your repentance first. Show her your change first. And once you do that, she'll get a chance. She'll say, this is the man I want to be with. I'm going to follow. You see what I'm saying? Read that. Acts 3, verse 19. Repent ye, therefore, and be converted. So first step is you. You got to be converted. What's that? It says you got to repent and be converted, right? So if, if you don't change, what example is she going to follow? You see what I'm saying? Women want to follow righteous men. I mean, even in the world, they'll follow wicked men. The D-boys come through with the rims and the loud music, the big chains. Like, oh, they flock. Because women, that's, that was, that's what they were set up to be our help me. So they do want to follow us, right? I think at a younger age, women want to follow whatever was fun. And then they get a little older and like, wait a minute. You know, I want a house. You know, I want security. You know, I want stability. I want protection. I, look at what I got here. That's why a lot of women say, I can't submit to this man because he a nig. You know what I'm saying? He ain't, how am I going to submit to this dude? You see? So that's why you, being the head of the house, you have to change first. Give me that, give me that scripture, um, Second Edges. You got that read. Second Ezra 14, verse 13. Get out. Now, therefore, set thine house in order. So that's the first step. Set your house in order. It start with you, and then it funnel down. Right? And you can't, you can't halfway do it. You got to get in there. You see what I'm saying? That's, that's the picture of on your shirt. Okay, okay, all right. Yeah. Well, if you choose that woman, it's your responsibility. So you single right now? Yeah. Well, we don't have respect for ourselves these days. You know what I'm saying? Most of the time, you see brothers they draw us when they walking up and down the street. You see what I'm saying? So it's hard to, for that respect. If you're a young man, you, you see what I'm saying? If you're a young man in the older generation ain't doing nothing but riding around on their motorcycles through the neighborhood, how you gonna respect that? Look, before you worry about what how you deal with that woman, you gotta worry about yourself. See? But you gotta be there first. Hey, we can't we can't operate on what if and maybes, right? Because right now you can be like, if but I wanna do this and I wanna do that. And I tell you what in accordance to what you wanna do. But what if you ain't doing it? What if you at the house, you smoking weed, you got like eight different chicks, numbers in your phone that you knocking off on every other day. I ain't gonna tell you to leave that sister because you are, you ain't righteous yourself. Right. You see what I'm saying? So first of all, repentance got to be seen in you, right? right. right? Because how I'm going to tell somebody, I'm going to go to my son and be like, look, look, man, you can't be smoking that weed. Uh, you got to stop. You see what I'm saying? You know? My son looking at me like he's crazy. You're getting high right now. So it, repentance got to be found in you first. You have to be the first example. That's then right. if your, 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 the woman, she will follow, right? The kids will follow. But those things got to be established, right? So I'm not going to tell you, no, just leave the sister, whatever. No, nah, that's the situation you're in, but you have to fix yourself first. You ever, you ever rode on an airplane before? All right, any of y'all been in, on a plane? You been on a plane? When, they, when, they, when you're on a plane, they're going through the instructions, right? In case something bad happens, they'll say if these things pop out the air, right? They're going to tell you to put the mask on your face first and then put it on like a kid that's sitting next to you. Want to know why? Because if you die, you can't help the kid. So guess what? Same thing with repentance. You have to repent first if you want your woman to repent. You see what I'm saying? For me to get my wife to repent, 
she had to see it in me. She had to see that I wasn't the same dude going out late at night playing video games all day, getting high. You see what I'm saying? You get it? So that's what it's got to be. Before we, before, give me Isaiah chapter, um, Isaiah 58, and what's that, the point of the fourth of the finger? Isaiah 58, and I think it's 13, somewhere in there. That's why you so if you take away the yoke, the putting forth of the finger. 5089. Read that. Isaiah 58, verse 9. Then shalt thou call, and the Lord shall answer. Thou shalt cry, and he shall say, Here I am. If thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke, the putting forth of the finger. So he said, the most high is going to hear your, your prayers. He's going to hear what you're asking of him. But first thing you got to do, you got to put this away. You know, your kids like this, you like this, you ain't doing this, you ain't doing that. You got to do this first, right? You got to see what you ain't doing that first and fix that. Before I can give you any advice on putting a sister aside and getting rid of the kids that, that you took on that responsibility for, first of all, you got to get yourself right. You see what I'm saying? Now, not, not what? Dead her, dead okay, but are you keeping God's law, statutes, and commandments? That's that's what's right. Are you keeping the commandments of God? Okay, well, let me, I'm gonna show you some commandments that you just you don't know you're not keeping, but you ain't keeping, right? Give me Leviticus 21, Genesis 3 and 12. Yeah, yeah. Genesis. 3 verse 12 And the man said The woman whom thou hast gavest to beat with me She gave me out of the tree And I did eat So even from the beginning Adam was like Most house was like hey what, what's going on Did you eat of the tree that I told you not to He was like The woman that you gave me <laughs> She did it From the beginning men did that Right But we can't be like that no more like, give, me that, give me that um, Leviticus 21 Read that real quick. Verse 5. Leviticus 21, verse 5. They shall not make baldness upon their heads. So the Bible gives us law, statutes, and commandments. One, we can't shave our heads. Some people bald, it is what it is. But some brothers want to look like Michael Jordan. You know, they shh, get the rays on them. So you can't do that. That's a law. Read. Neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard. And then you can't shave your beard. You see what I'm saying? Like, I can see you can grow hair in your beard. You shave it, right? You got to keep God's law, statutes, and commandments. That's right. just that's just one. It's many commandments. Like, we read, went over eating pork, right? You eat pork, catfish, shrimp, crab, lobster, none of that stuff. All praise to the... I eat. Okay, you do, all right? We got to start keeping God's law, statutes, and commandments. Right. The scripture said we can't do that. Give me just Leviticus 11 to 7 real quick just to read it to the sister. So you say you eat pork? All right, let me show you what the Bible say. Because whenever I say I don't eat pork, what's the first thing somebody say to me? Oh, you a Muslim? The Bible was before the Quran. Right? Read that. Leviticus 11, verse 7. And the swine. The pig, the pork. Read. Though he divide the hoof and be cloven-footed, yet he cheweth not the cud. He is unclean to you. So guess what? It's unclean. We don't supposed to eat that. Right? So when we understand what put us in this situation, not keeping God's law, statutes, and commandments, right? How do we fix that? We got to start keeping God's law, statutes, and commandments. Right. And you may look at it and be like, well, that's a little thing, me having a beard, whatever. You know what I'm saying? If I tell my son, be inside when the lights come on, he need to be inside when the lights come on. It ain't no, well, I was just out there five minutes longer. You know what I'm saying? Because I know when I wouldn't come inside when the lights went on, I got the beat down. You know what I'm saying? So it's about obedience. We got to be obedient to God. Right. And right now, you don't know the laws of God, right? You can you can say that. You don't know the laws of God. Because I know when I was in your position and I was searching and looking for stuff, I didn't know the laws of God. I know what, what I thought was the laws and what I thought I was doing good. You know what I'm saying? Like the scripture says, it's a way that seemed right unto a man. I thought I was doing good. You know, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't beating my wife. So I, I had to be a good husband. We had a house. We had cars. But it was more to that. You see what I'm saying? Give me Hebrews 10 and 25 real quick. I think that's what I want. 
So how to help you out with that, right? Start at verse 24. Hebrews 10, verse 24. And let us consider one another. So consider one another, right? So I look at you and I see myself seven years ago, right? I'm, I'm like, I'm considering this brother. I see the situation he in. Because guess what? The woman that I was with, my son, he's not my biological son. You see what I'm saying? So I know what you're talking about. To provoke unto love and to good works. So I want to provoke you unto love, which is keeping God's laws, statutes, and commandments and good works, right? Carrying out the uh, charge that the Most High God gave us. But I'm going to show you something that you got to do to make that easy. Read. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. Every Sabbath, we come together. Like-minded brothers and sisters, our wives and our children, we come together and we learn the Word of God. Not just on Saturday, different days throughout the week. The brothers meet together and they learn. They get to ask questions. You know, when you're in church, you don't really ask questions. I never was seen somebody stand up in church and be like, ah, uh, I got a question. But every, after every one of our Sabbath classes, it's like, does anybody have a question? Sometimes we have class where we say, today gonna be Q&A day. What you got? You see what I'm saying? Read that again. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is. Go ahead. But exhorting one another. Exhorting one another. You know what exhort mean? It means to harshly correct. It means to like, I see you doing something wrong, I'm on you about it. Brother, brother, you're supposed to be growing your beard, bro. What's going on? It's still, it's still low. What's happening? Well, you know this job, bro. I ain't trying to hear all that, bro. Keep the commandments or die. You right. see what I'm saying? Right. Exhort one another. Get on each other. That's that's what you got up here, right? If I jump wrong. One of these brothers is not going to be a fun day for me. You see what I'm yep. saying? If I was to ever have to be like, my wife was to call and say, like, my husband cheated on me. Man, it would be horrible for me. You see what I'm saying? I'd be stood up in class. Brothers would be going off on me. You know what I'm saying? They'll sit me to the side. Don't call me no more until there's certain times you get yourself right, brother. Right. You see what I'm saying? In the world, though, you cheat on your wife and be like, well, what she look like? Let me see a picture of her. Did you videotape it? She got a friend? You see what I'm saying? That's the difference in being around brothers that's keeping God's laws, statutes, and commandments and separating yourself from this wicked world out here and making a change. Breaking the change. You see what I'm saying? Great. And so much the more as you see the day approaching. So we believe that Christ is going to come back. That it's a kingdom for us. So guess what? I want to make sure my brother make it. My brother make it. My sister make it. You see what I'm saying? So that's the first step. You got to I wouldn't say join us, but you need to prove us and come and be around us so you can learn what you're not doing right. You see what I'm saying? Because as long as she can pick up the phone and call her homegirl, she's like, I ain't got to do what that nigga say. You see what I'm saying? But if she around sisters and she like, well, he wanted me to do this, but I said no. And the sister go like, sister, you got the devil on you. Right. You being evil as hell, sister. He out here trying to, we out here right now, guess what? Out here trying to talk to y'all. It's like, the sister's going to be like, you're supposed to make stuff easy for him. Right. Right? You're supposed to be making stuff easy. You're supposed to be that rest for him. That's right. When you got sisters doing stuff like that, your wife's going to get it. Instead of listening to NeNe on Real Housewives of Atlanta or whatever. You see what I'm saying? So, you got the flyer. It's got an address on there. It's got a phone number on there. We meet every Saturday. You, if you really serious about making a change and breaking them chains, you see what I'm saying? You will do that. Because right now, this is all we can do. We can just give you a, a, a little small, you may have thought you got a bunch of knowledge out here, but you didn't. You got that. That's what you got. You got day one uh, Israelite. Basic. Super basic. Right? It's way deeper than this. To change ex-killers, gangbangers, adulterers, cheaters, it's way more than just hearing that you're special. Right. It's way more than that. And guess what? If you're real about it, you're going to show up. You see what I'm saying? We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission.
We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.